And our memory verse, Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Colossians 1.18. Amen. You may be seated. I like that song. It, uh, uh, it says, we don't know through flame or flood, but his presence goes before us. And I'm covered by his blood. And there's many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. And I was thinking about that, you know, uh, the combustion engine of a car. I don't understand how it works, but I like to go out and use it. I don't understand how electricity works, but I like to go over to the switch and turn it on. Folks, I don't understand all the things that are in the world today, but I trust the one who knows, the one who made it. The one who designed it, designed it for us. And it's by faith we live. It's by faith we walk this world knowing that he's ahead of us. And we don't have to worry if we let him take the realm. If he's in control, folks, you know he's the best person to have? You don't need anybody else. You need the Lord to be in control. Amen? And that's what we're talking about this morning. service is about victorious Christian living. Many churches do not have... A, a, a program where they can teach people how to live. They just have a service and then people go out and live the way they want to live. And they live it in defeat. There's two kinds. You can live in victorious or you can live in defeat. You know that commercial or what was that? Uh, uh, the great world of sports. And they used to sing that uh, the, the agony of defeat. You know, and I know it's not the things you're walking on, but there's some agony when you're defeated. And there's great, great blessing in having victory. In fact, victory causes happiness. Defeat causes sadness. Victory is winning. Having defeat is losing. How many here want to live today and have victory over everything they have? Everything, that the, everything that's around that corner, you want to have victory before you even know it's coming. Do you know that he knows way before you do? He knows what's around the corner. All you have to do is put your trust in the one that's already there. He knows the future. He's given us a great book that reveals to us many things. I'll read Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. We started this last week. Two weeks ago, we taught about Baptist pro-choice, choosing right. And then we brought up the fact that God's given us a choice. Hallelujah. I am so happy that God has given us a choice, aren't you? Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. The Bible says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That's interesting, against you. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. Do you know what victorious Christian living consists of? Choices. Not wrong choices, but right choices. Decisions determine destiny. In everything that you do in this world, on this side of glory, the decisions that you make moment by moment determine your not only instant destiny, but eternal destiny. When you made a decision to know Jesus Christ as Savior, you made a good choice. You're going to heaven when you die. That's settled. Hallelujah. That's the best choice you could ever make. But you know, if that was all it was, God would have taken you from the day you got saved and pulled you up out of the world and said, you know, I don't want you part of that world. I want you in heaven with me. If that's the way it was. I mean, God said, I'm going to take care of you. But he meant it here on planet earth he's going to take care of you right here if you trust him enough for your soul to be in glory why wouldn't you trust it in your daily walk every day with him my friends that's what victorious christian living is because defeated christian living is everywhere i see defeated christians all the time oh what was me i don't know what to do I stubbed my toe last week, and the Lord didn't help me get it fixed. I mean, they're just whining all the time. Everybody's whining about the government, the inflation. I can't afford food. Did not God say, I'd provide food for you? 
I can't, I, this outfit doesn't fit me. Why yeah, why are you wearing it? <laughs> Did not God say he provide clothing? Folks, I'm telling you, God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness right here, right now. In 2024, what's the date today? I don't know, March 17, 2024. He has given you the provision to go on to this life victoriously and not defeated. There's so many churches out there that when Christians walk out of that church, they're defeated. They're beaten. And every now and then, they need beaten. Just to remind them what it's like to be victorious. God's given us a choice. Choose life or death, blessing or cursing. And he tells you and gives you the answer to that question. We talked about that last week. Choose life. It's the right choice. The sad part about it is we don't choose right. We choose wrong. Then we end up defeated and we lose the victory. Well, how are we to know the difference? I'm glad you asked. Turn with me to your Bible to Hebrew chapter 11. Strong faith is needed to be a Christian today. More than ever, we need strong faith. What is faith? We know that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That means it's something you don't see, but you can see the influence of it. I can see the influence of your faith here today because you walked into this building. You have faith that the Lord might have something for you. That's faith in an unseen God. We have something that, pe in fact, people say we, we, we worship a fairy tale. I've heard people tell me that before. Why are you even, I mean, he doesn't, we don't even know he exists. I do. You may not, but I do. I see the influence of God on you. I see the influence of God on this church, on me. And I see the influence of the devil on you. And I see the influence of the devil on me. I see the influence of the devil on the church. We can see the difference. Sometimes those that are defeated, Christians, can't see the difference. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. We want to have faith. We want to have faith in God. And our faith is what it's all about. Watch this in verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's pray. Father, I'm asking you, Almighty God, to help me this morning, Lord. Father, I diligently seek you today. And I know every single one here also seeks you. I pray, Almighty God, that you would open these verses to our minds and our hearts. Father, that we might be able to understand who you are, the character that you'd like us to have towards you and trusting you, Lord, in everything. And God, I pray, Father, that our faith would increase because of the preaching of your word. Help us now in Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. I like that word diligent. <clears throat> How many here like the word diligent? I think it's a neat word. It's defined as in a way that shows care and consciousness in one's work or duties. Being diligent. The Webster's 1828 says, with steady application and care. How many know there is some benefit of being diligent towards God? A victorious Christian life is the life that is lived by faith in a moment-by-moment -moment surrender to God, diligently seeking Him. In other words, that you show a consciousness of God every moment of the day. Again, to have victory versus defeat is a moment-by-moment -moment basis. How many know here that you could have a moment of defeat when you take a hammer and smash your thumb with the hammer? All of a sudden, the pain overrides your physical ability to stay calm and you yell an explorative. You've instantly been defeated. You lost your victory because of your outside circumstance. If we were to diligently seek God by faith, when that circumstance happens, the first thing that a Christian ought to do is... Mm, don't suck. Don't say a word. Why? Because you know yourself. 
You know you're willing and able to say those things or do those things. Folks, you know you're human. You know your flesh. You had a past, but you have a future. And that future to be victorious means diligently every moment seeking God's will for your life. That's being victorious. In Exodus 15, verse 26, this word diligently comes up again. In Exodus 15, verse 26, and he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. How many know God's watching you right now? He's looking at every single one of us, including me, to see what our hearts are saying. To do that was right in his sight. He says, and, I, and give ear to his commandments. That's his Bible. And keep all his statutes. Again, his word. He says, in direct results of you being diligently hearkening to the voice of Lord, he says this, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Folks, we just had a prayer request for a bunch of healings. Do you know that this verse reveals to how to be healed? How to have healing? Do you know that disease is a direct result of sin? Do you know that COVID, when it got here, scared a lot of people? It killed a lot of people. Now, I'm not going to say whether or not this was made up or not. I don't know. God knows, but I know God preserves, and he took care of people. Now, we can get into the numbers and the facts and the figures and all that stuff about that, but that's not what we want to focus on. We want to focus on the Word of God reveals to us that he will take care of us as long as we hearken diligently to his voice. How many here believe that? Do you believe God? Do you believe God's word? Do you believe what he said is true? Do you know that unbelief is the worst thing for a Christian today? Well, I don't know about that. I'm just, uh, I just want to, I don't want to do what everybody says. You know, I'm going to do what the doctor says. I'm going to, I'm going to take this and take that. I'm going to, folks, I'm telling you right now, when we get to heaven, when we get to glory and Jesus says, you know what that was? <laughs> that was a joke. And you're going to see all the things that you got delivered from because God did it and you didn't. Why don't we trust God this side of glory? On everything. Trust him. Hearken to him. He says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. This verse, when COVID first came out, I don't know, it was three, four, four, four years ago. This verse, the first time we ever went on YouTube was the verse I preached on to help people from jumping off the ledge. People were going crazy. I mean, businesses were going nuts. What were they trusting in? The science? The science says. You know, I've never heard science say anything. I've heard people say things. I've never heard science say a word. Well, because of this and that, it doesn't matter. You know what matters? That you diligently seek his voice in all matters, all circumstances. No matter the circumstance, no matter the evil upon us, can we say with the psalmist in Psalms 119, verse 69, the Bible says, The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Do you know the whole book of one, Psalms 119 is about the Word of God? The longest uh, chapter in the Bible, 176 verses. What is that? Is that 16 times 11? I think it is. 176, 16, 11, where did where I've heard that for? Do you know that that particular portion of Scripture points to hearkening to the voice of God? Remember when David said, before I was afflicted? Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I know the difference? He learned it after. You don't have to. You can learn from him. You can learn from him. Hey, before you, I don't want to be afflicted, do you? I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be in a hospital. I don't want to be, have any of this stuff. Well, where are we supposed to go to? Go get a shot? That's not the answer. You know what the answer is? Hearken unto his voice, diligently seeking 
What saith the Lord about it? When I went to this verse right here, I was totally settled. I am the Lord that healeth thee. That's the one I trust in. I hope you do too. No matter what circumstance, no matter what evil that comes upon us, do we trust in God? In fact, I've often heard that all we got left is prayer. And I've said this before. No, that's not all you got left. That should be the first form of defense for anything in your life. And if there's something happened to you, if a, if a car is coming head on, your first words would be, Lord, help me. Should be. I've had testimony after testimony of car wrecks after car wrecks. You just missed it just by a second. Well, you said, Lord, help me. And he did. He delivered you. He saved you from certain death. I don't know who holds tomorrow. That's right. But you know who holds today. Folks, he's much better than any uh, bank account. He's much better than any hospital or doctor. He's much better than anything else in the world. You got financial trouble? Give it to the Lord. He knows your trouble. He, the Bible says he's not, not, not know anything about you. He knows everything. He knows your infirmities. He knows how you're feeling. He knows how David's struggling with, with the loss of a, a loved one and Yvonne. He knows that. Give it to him. He'll take care of it. Trust in him, diligently seeking him. David's heart was tender towards God. In fact, he was called a man after God's own heart. And he realized it, as we today need the desperate, to be desperate for this. Despite the world, the flesh... And the devil, if we diligently with care apply God's word to our heart and apply it to our lives, he promises. He promises. And one, not, not a single promise has gone off the charts. He's answered everyone. He promises to take care of us. You know, the world lives by self-advancement. It lives by self-esteem and self-gratification. We live in the me generation. Have you heard that before? It's a selfish and is ignorant of God's will, let alone God's heart. David was a man after God's heart. He knew what he needed to do. The question is, do we know what we need to do in those circumstances? David went through a lot of stuff. I mean, he even killed somebody. His flesh overrid his thought and mind. Folks, that happens to us too. Sometimes our flesh gets in the way of our heart. Now, the heart is despitefully wicked, and who can know it? God said, never trust your heart. Have you heard that expression? Oh, trust your heart on this one. No, don't trust your heart. That's the worst thing you can trust in the world. It's not your heart that needs to be trusted. It's the Lord that needs to be trusted. What's the Lord say about things? Kinsley said, if you want to be miserable... Think much about yourself, about what you want, what you like, what respect people ought to pay you, and what people ought to think of you. That will keep you miserable for the rest of your life. A victorious Christian lives by abiding in Christ and not in self. Abiding in Christ. Well, preacher, what does that mean? I'm glad you asked. Go to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, we call this uh, uh, the fruit chapter. In John chapter 15, verse 1, the Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, and no more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Implication? <laughs> you can't do nothing without Jesus. You can't do nothing. We can't do it. We can't do it without being attached to the vine. We can't do it without abiding. And the next verse tells us what happens when we don't. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather at them and cast them in the fire, and they are burned. 
You either are with him or you're against him. He says he'll take care of you. He'll provide for you. And the other one says they're going to gather and burn you. And by the way, notice what gathers. It's not the Lord that gathers. Notice what gathers. It says men gather them. You know what the world wants to do? Burn you, chew you up, and spit you out. You know what the Lord wants you to do? He wants you to trust Him in all things. Verse 7 says, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you. Watch this again. If, you, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, what we're talking about, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Preacher, what does abiding in Christ mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. From the beginning of this sermon, we said it's a moment-by-moment -moment conscious decision of choosing faith in an unseen God doing an unseen, through an unseen circumstance. You don't know what holds tomorrow, but he does. Trust him in it, and you will be just fine. What is abiding? Praying daily. We talk about that every day. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. Well, how do you pray going down? In fact, I was talking to somebody, I, don't know, I think it was Brother Terry and I were talking, and, and Phil says, you don't close your eyes when you're driving, do you? <laughs> no, no, we can pray with our eyes open. You can even pray standing up, sitting down, lying down. You can pray anytime, anywhere, any place. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing. Folks, we ought to have an attitude of prayer every day. In fact, when you're walking into any given situation where you're unsure of, you know what you ought to be doing? Praying. You're walking into the bosses. Oh, Lord, please help me. I know I'm going into the battle zone. Give me strength. I don't know what I'm going to say. What am I going to do? What am I? Father, I pray, dear God, you'd help me. <sighs> he'll give you the peace. And now with that, the God, God says he'll give you the words, too. I have had more times where I've been in a situation where God gives me the words to speak. He promises that because I trust in those words. I trust in him doing it. Daily praying, pray without ceasing, reading God's word daily. You know, praying is you talking to him, remember? You know how he talks to you? Through his Bible, through his word. Well, is there a still small voice? Yeah, it'll bring this Bible up. All of a sudden, you're praying, uh, Lord, what do I do? How, what do I do in this situation? I mean, there's two things ahead of me, Lord. And the, in the back of your mind, you'll remember, oh, what was our memory verse? I couldn't remember a memory verse. What was it? Oh, Colossians 1.18, I knew that. But what was it? That in all things, he might have the preeminence. All of a sudden, that's that still, small voice. Is my will in this? Do I have preeminence in it? Do you know the Bible says that we should abstain from all appearance of evil? That's a real simple one. How do you see appearance? You see with your eyes. That means God's given your eyes the ability to tell that's the right way and that's the wrong way. I shouldn't go there or I can go there. You know, there's a thought of thou shall not there to protect you. And there's a lot of thou shall there to help you and bless you. Do we read God's word daily? Do we search the scripture daily to see whether it is so? Folks, you know, the more you know this Bible, the more you'll know how to go through any circumstance you have. You know why? Because most people have gone through it in this book. All of the Old Testament saints, uh, David, uh, his kids, Solomon, one of the greatest, wisest men in the world. Everybody proclaims the wisdom of Solomon. Do you know he screwed up? Don't think you're immune from anything. I'm not immune from it. You're not immune from it. That's because we're this side of glory. That's why we need to walk victoriously with Christ. To have a victorious Christian living is moment by moment, day by day, year by year. Folks, it's collective. We need to search the scriptures to find out what God says about every given thing that we do. I don't care what it is that you have, the question you have, what does the Scripture say? According to Scripture, according to Scripture, according to Scripture. We talked about that to this morning in 1 Corinthians 15. The gospel is according to Scripture. The gospel is according to Scripture. Well, if that's the case, then should we not read the Scriptures? 
We should fellowship with Jesus daily. There shouldn't be a day go by that you don't mention his name and talk to him personally, asking him to help you through the day. We should be fellowshipping with each other every day. You should have one of us or one of your Christ, close Christian friends be able to fellowship every day with another Christian. That's important. That, in fact, iron sharpeneth iron, the Bible says. That means that when you get with another Christian, you're saber rattling, and the sword goes against sword. How many ever heard when the swords go to? That's a deafening sound, isn't it? And when they're practicing, they're practicing wielding that sword, and that sword hits and makes that metal sound, and all of a sudden it's, it's real to them. It's something they want to take notice of. You know what that sword is? The Word of God. But when you got a Bible and the other guy's got a Bible and you put them things two together, it's going to make a deafening noise that you're going to remember. And it's going to, but, and the Bible says it's used because of use of that Bible, you get to understand it. You got to use it. Use the Word of God. Fellowshipping daily. We need to pray daily without ceasing. We need to read God's word, search the scriptures. Fellowshipping with Jesus daily. Fellowshipping with each other. And it's not just today. It's every day, everywhere, everything. I call it this. Super saturation, super separation, super sanctification results in a victory every moment of every day of every circumstance. Why? For victory. John 16, 33. John 16, 33. Look in your Bibles here. Just to bring something out that you have to know now that you're in this army of the Lord. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Isn't that good? In Christ we have peace. Watch this. In the world which you are in, Ye might have tribulation. No, it says, ye shall have tribulation. You're going to go through it. Yea, all them that love God shall suffer persecution. You will have tribulation. You will have to make decisions today. Even today, when you walk out of this building, whether or not God agrees with it or disagrees with it, whether you're going to have victory or defeat, whether it's what God says or what you think. You shall have tribulation. The verse goes on to say, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He's already been there where you've been. All we have to do is trust him in it. Henry said, a trial is an experiment or search made upon a man by some affliction to prove the value and strength of his faith. Do you know that every time you are persecuted or every time you have a trial, it's a test. It's a test whether you're going to go through it or not. In fact, you've heard the anchor of the story. The strength of an anchor is tested and recognized by the storm it endures. The storms of life. We all have them. In fact, I think the brother came in. I was in sunshine and I got here and the clouds come over. Did you just say, I mean, I was looking at the, the sky, the eastern sky, and I seen them dark clouds coming. It was beautiful, sunshiny. Oh, boy, here comes the clouds. Folks, do you know that happens every day? Storm clouds come every day. Storms come every day. The strength of an anchor is only tested by the storm it's in and that it endures. I was on the USS Forstall, and we were in the North Atlantic. And the North Atlantic, if you ever even see anything, in fact, I think YouTube has shorts about being in the North Atlantic, and they got this really eerie sound if you ever punch in North Atlantic. And the North Atlantic is the wickedest seas in the planet. The waves sometimes are 30 to 60 to 100 feet tall. And an aircraft carrier is over 1,000 foot long. My friends, I've witnessed a wave come over an aircraft carrier not knowing that we were even going to make it to the other side of the wave. They're huge. That's called the North Atlantic. And we were anchored in that? Boy, I am so thankful for that anchor. It endured that storm. That's what an anchor's for. That's what Christ is for. You know the storm is coming. You know the waves are coming. You know the sky is dark coming towards you. That's in sunlight. 
You know that the shadows of those clouds are going to be coming over. Do you trust in the shadow? Do you trust in the sunlight? Or do you trust in the living God that gave you both the trial and the persecution? And the Bible says often that God does that just to prove you. He already knows what you're going to do. Do you know what the test is for? For you and I. To see what you will do in trial and testing. And sometimes we get defeated. Friends, we have flat, we're flesh. But do you know what that should let you recognize? That God is a God of second chances. He gives you another choice, another test. And maybe the next time you'll go through victorious. And that's our goal, is to say what the Lord saith. What is the victory? Romans 8, 36. Romans 8, 36. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's a military term, conquer. Conquer means you won. Conquer means you had the victory. That's victorious Christian living, is being a conqueror. We have a, a saying in the Marine Corps, is adapt, overcome, and conquer. Adapt, overcome, and conquer. Folks, you can try it on your own and fail, or you can try it with the Lord and be victorious. Why? Verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Listen to what Paul says. Are you persuaded? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Folks, that's everything that's going to happen to you tomorrow, the next day, everything that happened to you yesterday, everything that happened to you today. That's everything. He says, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth. I don't care how high that wave is. I don't care how dark that sky is. Nor any creature, other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the one we serve. That's your God and my God. 1 John 5, verse 4. 1 John 5, verse 4. The Bible says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you sit here and tell me today that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you say that you're going to heaven when you die because you have believed that Jesus Christ died and paid for the penalty of your sin? You know, that's a pretty big feat if you ask me. That means you have victory already for eternal life. Don't you think he wants you to have victory for the present, right now? Absolutely. He wants you to be more than conquerors. Whosoever is born of God or cometh the world, they overcometh the world. Adapt, overcome, and conquer. This is the victory that overcometh the world. First step, of course, are you born of God? Is your faith in Christ? You must be born again to have victory. If you are not, you haven't even started. Do you want victory? Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. That's the hardest part because we do like our own ways, don't we? <laughs> God's made a provision for each and every one of us for the hereafter and the here today. He has given us everything to, that pertains to life and godliness on this side of glory. Should we not live like it and live victorious? And I know there's valleys, but I know there's hilltops. And on the hilltops, you can look back in the valley and say, wow, I'm glad I'm out of that one. You know, it's a proven fact that if you're not in a valley today, you might be tomorrow. And if you're not on a hilltop today, you might be tomorrow. I don't know who holds tomorrow, but I know the one who does. Aren't you glad 
He took care of us no matter what. Let's pray. Father, thank you, God, for this day. Lord, help us, dear Father, to be with you today. Help us, dear God. Lord, I pray, Father, that you just be with each and every one here today. Lord, I do know that uh, you're with us and you guide us and direct us in all things. And Father, I'm asking you, Almighty God, to help us. Lord, this world's a mess, but Lord, you have put us here for a reason. And I pray, God, that each and every one of us know exactly why we're here to give the gospel to others, that they might know the same Jesus that we know. Father, my prayer, dear God, Lord, that today would be a good day to choose right and to choose you to lead and guide. Thank you, Father. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Have a good day. You're best.